Okay, recognizing abnormal breathing. By the way, my students today asked me why this was, it was set up in the back of the classroom before we moved everything around and made room for that couch. They're like, listen, Mac, why do you have a video camera in here? I'm like, because I record my evening lectures so that the students who aren't here can uh, catch up on YouTube. And they're like, oh, why didn't you do that for us? <laughs> why would I do that for you? You're supposed to be here. I'm not going to do it for them. I don't care. They can go find the lectures that I give to you guys, right? Yeah. Why do I need to record it there you go. twice? Okay, recognizing abnormal breathing. What does abnormal breathing look like? What, honey? They I shouldn't call you honey, sorry. They can be breathing super fast. They're really slow. Okay, so they have an abnormal rate. What else? Uh, abnormal rhythm. Abnormal rhythm. What kind of rhythms might we see? Trying to take like a couple deep breaths, then smaller like short breaths, and just not consistently the same type of breathing. Okay. So if we were to look at a waveform, and we were to look at a normal waveform for breathing, what does that waveform look like? Up and down. Yeah, it's a pretty smooth up and down, right? That's going to be our normal, we're going to call that normal. That's normal breathing. What other types of breathing might we see? Rapid breathing. So like rapid. So what's rapid going to look like? A lot more in the same distance. Yeah. So we're going to see it like this, right? I said I didn't mean to do it that big. And you know, the opposite is shallow, less, because they hurt their ribs or something. Okay, so we could have slow respirations. Pardon? A break in respiration? We can have a break in respiration. So that would be abnormal for sure, right? Uh, let's see. So we would be breathing normally, and then all of a sudden we don't have a breath. Okay. What other type of respirations might we see? Deep. Okay. Deep, you could do deep with any of these, right? Yeah. So we have a normal rate, but our respirations could be really deep. So if we had a normal rate and our respirations were really deep, we would see something like... So that's a normal rate, but the respirations are pretty deep. Okay? What else? Same thing with shallow. Yeah, we could have shallow respirations. Normal rate, shallow respirations. We could have rapid respirations that are deep or rapid respirations that are shallow. Okay. What other types of patterns do we have? See, these are all things that you should be able to recognize even without a waveform in front of you. Okay? A person who is breathing normally, has a normal rate, normal depth, they're going to look normal to you. A person who's breathing at a normal rate but has very shallow respirations, what do you think is going to happen? Are they going to look normal? What happens when you have shallow respirations? Or what doesn't happen when you have shallow respirations? Not getting enough oxygen. You're not getting enough oxygen. Why not? Because you're not taking, not using, expanding your lungs. You're not expanding your lungs. How much air in our lungs lives in our dead space or exists in our dead space? Do you remember what our dead space is? What is the dead space? It's not 
It's the space where no gas exchange happens. Okay? So, if you're taking very shallow respirations, there's no gas exchange happening in the air that you're taking in. Okay? Everybody kind of pant. Hyperventilating. Hyperventilating. What's going to happen to you if you hyperventilate? Pardon? I have a side knot. What are they? Syncopal episode? Syncopal episode. Why are you going to have a syncopal episode? Because you're not keeping the oxygen in long enough to allow for diff diffusion, right? Diffusion, yeah. So maybe and why is diffusion important? Because you're not getting that exchange of gases going on. And why do we need that exchange of gas? So we can live. Why? So we can live. So you can live. Bring O2 in and carbon brain brain out. function out. What did you say? Keep your brain functioning. To keep your brain functioning. If you are hyperventilating for too long and your brain isn't getting oxygen, what is your brain going to do to protect itself? Makes you pass out. Hit the chill yeah. button. Bam. Why? Because it resets the breathing. Because it resets your breathing. That's why babies who throw temper tantrums, it's okay to let them pass out. As soon as they pass out, they're going to start breathing. Hopefully. I wish I knew that before. <sighs> Is it scary to watch your kid pass out from a lack of screaming? Depends on how long they've been screaming. <laughs> Finally, it's lack quiet. Lack of screaming? <laughs> a lack of breathing? Yeah, it is. It's scary to watch your kid pass out for any reason. But as soon as they hit the ground, man, they're going to start breathing normally again. All right, what are some of the other patterns that we might see? What happens when a person has passed away right after they've had a cardiac arrest? Agonal respirations. What do we see in agonal respirations? Just gasping. Yeah, we're going to see long periods. <gasps> There's no pattern. It's pretty not. It's not cool to see. It's kind of freaky, huh? Okay, yeah. what are some other types of respirations that we might see? Probably it. Remember that your mid, your, your your brain stem is your respiratory center, and you may have something that has caused death already, but your brain stem doesn't recognize it yet. It's like a chicken running around with their head cut off. It just happens. Okay. Um, how about uh, Shane Stokes respirations? commonly seen in patients with metabolic acidosis. It's so awesome of you to look in the book and read it directly to me. That's wonderful. Okay, so Kuzmal respirations are very deep, very rapid respirations, and they occur in people who are dealing with metabolic acidosis. Why? Uh, 
because that, that drive, the hypoxic drive is like off, so they're trying to like compensate for it. That's a really good thought. Not quite correct, but a really good thought. And, and a thoughtful thought. It does have something to do with their acid base balance. That's all I got. That's all you got? Somebody else. Okay. These are, this, these type of respirations are seen in, with people who are in metabolic acidosis because one of the ways that the body corrects acid base balance issues within itself is to try and blow off extra carbon dioxide. So, what is ketoacidosis? That's part of this or no? Uh, diabetic ketoacidosis is a, it occurs after a prolonged period of hyperglycemia. Your body can't get rid of the sugars that are in the bloodstream because it's not producing the correct amount of insulin. So as those sugars start to break down, it causes your body to become acidic. This, can, this is also a sign of diabetic ketoacidosis. What else, do you, what else comes along with these deep, rapid respirations when you're dealing with ketoacidosis? Anyone? No? It's a smell. Have you ever smelled? Sweet. It's, yeah, it smells sweet. It smells fruity. When a person is dealing with diabetic ketoacidosis, their breaths smell fruity. Okay. So a person who's trying, who's in Kuzmo respirations, and they're dealing with metabolic acidosis, they are trying to blow off the extra acid that's in their body. And they're trying to do that by getting rid of as much carbon dioxide as they can. That's why we have deep, rapid respirations. Okay. Any of these, chain stokes, Kuzmo, slow, Whatever this was, irregular, this was irregular. I should have written that down. Irregular, rapid, deep, shallow, agonal. Any of those, with the exception of normal, is an abnormal respiration or a, an abnormal respiratory pattern. If you see any of those, you should be able to recognize the fact that your patient is not breathing adequately. Okay. For a patient who is having agonal respirations, what about those respirations should make you think they're not breathing adequately? That's probably not a good. That's probably not a good example. The fact that their heart's not beating, that's probably why they're not breathing adequately. Good job, Susan. Okay, how about shallow respirations? Why would shallow respirations make you think that your patient's not breathing adequately? If they're shallow, then you know they're just not getting enough oxygen. They're not getting that adequate gas exchange down in the alveoli, right? How about rapid respirations? Same thing. Something in there is not necessarily allowing the gas exchange to take place. Does rapid respirations automatically mean that the gas exchange is not taking place? No. No. You can have rapid respirations and still have the appropriate volume, right? So what about rapid respirations should make you think that your patient isn't breathing adequately? Here's looking at you. Is that what about rapid respirations? I'll see. Rapid what respirations about? make me think that just like oxygen isn't getting transferred into through like the capillaries and stuff. That's what it makes me think. Okay, so rapid and shallow, those two together, would lead you to believe that your patient is not getting appropriate gas exchange. Mm -hmm. Correct? Not just rapid, but rapid and shallow. If I was breathing at a rate of 24 breaths per, per minute, is that rapid? Yeah. Okay, if I was breathing at a rate of 24 breaths per minute and you could tell that I'm panting, do I have rapid and shallow respirations? Am I getting appropriate gas exchange? If I'm breathing at a rate of 24 per minute, but you can see that my lungs are expanding equal and bilaterally, am I getting appropriate gas exchange? No. More than likely. So even though my rate is rapid, I'm probably still getting appropriate gas exchange. So what about a rapid respiratory rate would make you think that your patient is not getting appropriate gas exchange? Well, you just 
say if it's shallow. If it's shallow, okay. Um, I don't know. It may not necessarily mean they're not. It just means maybe they just got done running. Maybe they just got done running. Do we need to provide an intervention to every person who has rapid respirations? Do we need to provide an intervention to every person who has slow respirations? Do we need to be able to figure out when we're supposed to do what? That's our job. Okay? So rapid respirations in and of itself is not an indicator that somebody needs help. Fair? Okay. What about slow respirations? They could be really calm. They could be really calm. They could be chill. You know, they could be sleeping on the blue couch in the EMT classroom. Their respirations are eight. If their respirations are eight and they're not cyanotic but they're drowsy, does that indicate that perhaps they're having a problem with gas exchange? Maybe. Could. Could just mean they woke up from a great nap. Or on drugs. Or drugs. All right. What about an irregular? Something's not right. Something's not right. Respirations are supposed to be regular. There's, there's supposed to be a pattern to them. If you have irregular respirations or these periods of apnea, that's an issue. Okay, apnea is without breaths, right? If we break it down into our medical terms, it's without breaths. And so we need to be aware of the fact that our patients are dealing with these periods of apnea. We need to know how to figure it out and what we're going to do about it. If we have a patient who has these really slow respirations, and they are they have an altered mental status are we going to help them what are we going to do if it's safe to help them we're going to do what i said if it's safe to help them if it's safe to help them okay seen is safe you've got your your bsi on seen is safe <laughs> you're free to help your patient altered mental status it might be crazy i'm trying to eat your face on bath salts they, they could <laughs> they could all of that is it could happen let's pretend it's not okay and we're going to try and help our patient. Are we going to help this patient whose respirations are eight respirations per minute? Um, provide possibly ventilation or oxygen, ventil ventilation assistance or oxygen. Okay. We, we are probably going to provide ventilatory assistance if we can, right? Why? Because they're not doing it well enough on their own. They're not doing it on their own. Someone's got to pick up their slack. Okay. What other things might we see from someone who is having abnormal respirations or abnormal breathing? Uh, either loud sounds or no sounds. Like no breath sounds or like all the sounds we went over before, the strider, the... Okay, strider, wheezing, crackles, rails, rockai. So they may have sounds. What else? The body position. If a person is having a problem breathing, what's their position going to look like? Tripod. They're going to be in a tripod position. What's a tripod position? Hands on their knees. Yeah, their hands are going to be on their knees and they're going to be leaning forward and they're going to be. Why do they do that? Because it helps open up their lungs. Helps open up their lungs. And they can use all of their accessory muscles to open up their lungs. What else are we going to see? Their chest might not be like equal and bilateral. Okay, so we might have abnormal chest rise and fall. What else? The, their skin will be cyanotic, possibly. Okay, so we may see cyanosis. Accessory muscle being used. Yep, we're going to see some accessory muscle use. Nasal flaring. Nasal flaring, that's a good one. Level of consciousness. Yeah, they're probably going to have an altered LOC. Not always, but it's quite possible that they will, right? about retractions? Retractions kind of goes with this accessory muscle use, right? Okay. 
Any other signs of abnormal breathing? SpO2 could be off. Yeah, we may see a low SpO2. Okay, anything else? 